Hey guys, Toba Loco here. Welcome back to the 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil game. And today we're carrying on our series with story of qualifying. We finished off 2006, we finished off 2010, and now we are on 2014, which is the last game that actually featured this mode before EA cut it, even though I, I don't really know why they cut it. It's actually quite a fun little mode. So today we're going to be going through some of the scenarios and um, I reckon this is going to be a three-parter or maybe a two-parter. There seems to be a lot of scenarios, especially in Europe. We've got 23 in Europe, 8 in Africa, 6 in South America, 6 in Asia, uh, f only 4 in Oceania and 7 in CONCACAF. And then we've got the EA Sports extras there. Um, I'm not sure how you unlock them. Is it, um, I guess, if you finish the game or something? So we'll just do Europe today, because it seems like Europe has ma the majority of the scenarios on the game. So I may as well hyper-focus on Europe for this video, and then do the rest of the world in the next one. So let's have a look then. So a few of them I have already done, but that was ages ago. Um, so, like I said, I'm not going to do all of them, I'm just going to do the ones that take my interest. Bulgaria are assaulting Italy's goal, with the Italians reduced to 10 men after De Rossi was forced off um, after they used all their substitutes. Can you take control of the Azori and ensure they start their qualifying campaign with a win? Just trying to get you guys hyped up for the World Cup in 2022 by showcasing these old events and stuff like that. So I hope you don't mind, um, like I said. In previous videos, one chance and that is all you get unless a scenario I come very, very close or if I find a scenario really, really fun. And as usual, I will let you guys listen to the special commentary at the start of the matches. The corner here, late in the game. Can they make it count with the home crowd urging them on? Well, this game has had it all, Clive. Plenty of goals and Italy resilient despite being down to 10 men due to that De Rossi injury. Maybe we'll see a winner now. I'm not very good at 2014 compared to the other World Cup games, so I apologise in advance for that. Through ball here, Perlo out on the wing. Can we get a decent cross in? We've got three minutes of added time. It's crossed in. It's Yes, we scored! We scored from the cross and Asvado scores to make it 3-2 to Italy and Italy. We've completed the scenario on world class. How about that? That was a really nice cross and um, yeah, just tapped in by Osvaldo. Bit of luck from the goalkeeper. And yeah, first scenario, well, at the moment anyway, completed. And straight away we won our first scenario. That was a quick one, wasn't it? I mean, 3-2, all we needed was a 90th minute winner and we got it. So what a great start to the video. Look at that, I got all three ticks there, so excellent stuff. The Republic of Ireland find themselves trailing to a resilient Kazakhstan team with only a minute of normal time left on the clock. Thieves can change, however, as the Irish have a penalty. Can you convert the penalty and go on to find a winner? So we need two goals. Um, we've got to somehow win the match. Last couple of minutes. And the Irish have been dealt a get-out-of-jail card here. They've got a penalty. Yeah, big pressure moment, Clive. We've got to knock this one in the back of the net. All right, then. So we've got to score keen here. Can we do it? To the left. Yes, we did it just about. And um, Robbie Keane scores to make it 1-1. Now we need another goal to finish off Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan just being a little bit irritating and just knocking the ball around. You know how it is. They're just trying to get a draw. Um, a bit of a failure there. I couldn't really score. I will try that one one more time because it is a short scenario. And I think I can get the win if I can um, obviously get the ball back. we got to score this pen. Where's the bar? Oh my god. I was about to say. How was I supposed to get in the green there? Okay, right. Nice one. We scored. Oh, into the middle. Kazakhstan. Don't you dare. Oh, see what I mean? They're just sort of like, they're being a bit irritating. It hasn't been good at all ever since we scored that penalty. And again, we only draw against Kazakhstan. I couldn't get forward because what they did was when they conceded that penalty, they went defensive. Every time I tried to tackle them, it'll go straight back to Kazakhstan. You know, the usual stuff I complain about in my normal runs. Okay, next scenario, please. And it's going to be England versus Ukraine. So in the dying minutes of their second qualifier against Ukraine, England look like they are heading to defeat. Can you play as Frank Lampard, score with him for the second consecutive match and rescue a point for the free lion? This is like a be a pro scenario. So you play as one player uh, rather than the other whole team. We're inside the last 10 minutes. England still trailing. 
can they produce something from this free kick? Well, it looks like Frank Lampard's going to hit it, Clive. Look, he's usually very accurate from here. The commentator said I'm going to hit it. I actually might, to be honest. Let's see if this works. That's not bad! Oh, Lampard! Oh my god! <laughs> that was so close, dude! Now i got to rely on my teammates to get the ball back. Are they going to get the ball back, though? Hmm, I'm not sure about it. I mean, I could go and chase players and stuff like that, but that's not my job. This is the thing with these scenarios. You've got to rely on your teammates to actually play well, and the AI, most of the time anyway, um, will not help you. Go for it, Lampard! Oh, okay, well... Um, I'm going to retry it, I think, just for the fact that I almost scored the free kick at the start. Well, we lost against Ukraine because, well, England suck on this game. <laughs> they do. They literally do. How did I almost score that? Lampard to take it. Is that going to go in? Oh, it was close. I mean, it was travelling. I want to restart that. I want to start. I want to score this free kick. Lampard! Off the post! Do it for it, Lampard! Oh my goodness, so, like, how do I get it, like, in the right area? I think I have to aim for the middle of the goal. Lampard! Oh, caught by the keeper. You know what? I'm done with this scenario. <laughs> like, I, I'm not going to win it. I'm not. I, I just keep trying to score the free kick. Can you reach double figures to match the 10-0 victory Poland recorded against the Minnows in the previous FIFA World Cup qualification stage? So we need to score five goals in 13 minutes against San Marino. So the game's back underway. England leading San Marino by five goals to nil. How many are they going to get here? Well, you know, they could get 10 if they really want to, Clive. It's just a case of whether they can be bothered to keep going right to the last whistle. OK, so we just need to score 10 uh, well, five, sorry, against San Marino. Ten in total. It's going to be harder than it looks. 100% harder. But we, we can try it. Shelby and um, saved comfortably by the goalkeeper. Go on. Yes, we scored. And that was Danny Welbeck in the 82nd minute. So that's another goal. Excellent from Danny Welbeck. I don't think we we're going to score five more. I don't think so. I think San Marino, as bad as they are, I think they will be just irritating to get past. So did England really score five goals in 13 minutes against San Marino? Or did they actually um, score 10 or was it just a 5-0? Into the middle and we poke it in and that is Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain with the goal and that is 7-0 to England. We win against San Marino, it was only 7-0 and it, that is not enough to fulfill the scenario's qu um, quota. But it doesn't matter. I won in my mind. I won 7-0 and added two goals. Look at that England squad. Like, seriously. Like, <laughs> like Andy Carroll, Danny Welbeck, everything like that. Nah, nah. Look, let's have a look at this. Look, Tom Cleverley, John, she John Joe Shelby, Aaron Lennon. Okay, he's pretty decent back then. Um, but Andy Carroll and Cleverley and Shelby, nah, man. We got this from Serbia. Desperately need... Three points to pick up pace with Belgium and Croatia, but they find themselves two goals behind to the Croatians. Can you turn around the first ever meeting of these two sides in a competitive match by scoring three late goals? Okay, we'll give it a go. It's really not going well for Serbia. Two down early in the second half here to their bitter rivals. They need points from this game. Yeah, they certainly do, Clive. There's a bit of an edge around this game, isn't there? Look, Serbia have the ball. They've got to make the most of it from here. These two bitter rivals in international football and I guess just in general everything. It's going to be hard to beat Croatia. Just edging my way towards their box but not really doing an awful lot. Over the top, here comes Fuko Jevic, he's through. Come on, come on, get in front of him, man. Oh, that was so close. Into the middle here. Shot, okay, well that was a good save and that was realistically our first proper chance of the game. Okay, we're going to cross this in and hopefully someone will header it in. It's crossed in. Header! And it's batted away by the Croatian keeper. We've got a corner in the 90th minute. I doubt I'm going to do anything on this play. No, it's headed away. Kolarov has got it though. He goes for the strike off the post. Oh, unlucky. Go for the strike. It's blocked. Croatia block party. Serbia go for it and they score in the last minute of the game. That's going to be too little, too late. Radanovic scores. But... I mean, I tried my best. I mean, I could have scored goals, but yeah, no, it just wasn't to be here. We lost against Croatia, but only by two goals to one, and I guess that's not too bad. Approaching the last 10 minutes, 
And who would have thought it when Spain took the lead that Finland would fight their way back into this game? Not long left, Klopp. What the hell? What? What? How did that go in? <laughs> I was letting you guys listen to the commentary. I thought I'll give it a kick about. Can't believe the goalkeeper got beaten from that shot. That is really bad for Finland. Crossed in. Go for the header. Oh, nice catch. And that's going to be it. We won because we shot with Negredo from around about 30 yards out and it just basically bounced into the bottom corner. How about that? But yeah, we did that scenario and um, yeah, we move on to the next one. Oh, we've got another one involving Spain, this time with France. With only 11 minutes of normal time remaining, the challenge is even harder for Le Bleus after Pogba has been shown a red card. Can you boost France's chance of avoiding the playoffs and score two late goals against Spain with a man down? This was always going to be the crucial game in this qualifying group and France are really up against it. A goal down and a man down. Well, it's going to take some doing, Clark. They're going to have to find a superhuman effort to turn this game round. Good tackle by Menez. Come on. Through ball here. Come on. No, I did not want the through ball to him. I wanted it to the guy running down the wing. You saw him, right? He's running. Uh, overran it. Damn it. And that was a really good tackle by Spain to deny me the chance to get one back. Benzema, oh, just wide, come on. Well, that was an extremely boring scenario, it really was. I mean, I couldn't do anything. I had one shot and that was it. That is dreadful. Let's do that one more time and see if I can do it a little bit better um, because I'm not having a boring scenario like that. It's going through, no, he's not. Damn it, man. How did we just get caught up like that? Ah, uh, Spain are just here to spoil a party, a potential party for France. Here comes Iniesta, and that's gone wide, and I think that's game over. I don't want to do that scenario again. France just felt really bad in that game, and myself as well. Like, I, I was playing terribly. All right, we have a scenario here with Estonia versus the Netherlands, and it's a beer pro scenario again. So, Netherlands have destroyed every side they faced in qualification so far, so Estonia have done relatively well to trail just by one goal to nil. Uh, now is your time for Vasilev to step up and bring down the Dutch after going undefeated for 12 years. No surprise that Holland find themselves in front here, but this is a, a free kick to Estonia and a chance for Konstantin Vasilev. Well, they're only trailing by a goal to nil. They're being outclassed, but they have an opportunity here to get back in it. If I can just set up a goal or something in this one, or just even stop the Dutch from doing anything, then I'll be all right with that. I don't think I'm going to win it. Good tackle by Vasilev. Yeah, nice one. We got it back, but then we didn't get it back because the horrible tackling system on this game let me down again. I know I keep saying that. I know I'm like a broken record on this game, but... Oh, <laughs> I tackled my own player accidentally. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. It's half time and we are only still 1-0 down. It says that I got to score two goals and win the match. How am I supposed to do that with Estonia? I can understand the developer's point of view in this and other people's as well. Like, it could be fun if, like, say, Estonia were playing well. But at the moment, I'm just watching the Netherlands dribble the ball around. Come on. Through ball. Ah, oh. The Dutch defence holding on. Oh, hang on. I got it back. Yes, we scored. Come on. Yes, Vasilev scores. And it is 1-1. And I literally just shot against, like... Well, it was the wrong angle, if you know what I mean. I was stumbling, and we scored with Vasilev through a defensive error, and it is 1-1. Look at this shot. Look, he fell over as he did it. Literally, like, I saw the defender there right in front of me, and it's just one of those shots that you just randomly take, and it just happened to go in, caught the keeper off guard, and Vasilev has scored to make it 1-1. I'm really happy with that. So happy. we got a corner to defend, so let's hope we can. It seems like there's more Estonian players in the box than Dutch, but they go for the header and it's in! They scored! And Iron Robin scores to make it 2-1, and again, this is what I mean about Beer Pro. It's good because of the moment I had, you know, when I scored against the Dutch, but it's bad because the defenders there were nowhere to be seen and Holland just headed it in. Go for the strike, and um, we tested him, and it was almost going into the bottom left-hand corner again. Vasilev... Um, has done well. I reckon he's done better than a 6.6 .6 rating. 
And I think that's going to be game over. We lost 2-1 against the Dutch because we couldn't defend a corner. And um, that's unfortunate. I won't do that scenario again because it was very long. And um, we scored in it anyway. And I think that was a nice moment. So we move on to the next one. So we've got one here now. Um, Hungary are trailing by two against Romania who are being pushed by the amazing support from the home supporters. Can you overcome this with Hungary and fight for a draw against one of their biggest rivals in the region? And 10 minutes of this uh, second half. Goal kick to Romania. They have a, a measure of control here. 2-0 up. Well, I think if you listen to the crowd, Clive, you know they're right behind this team, but I'm not sure there's any way back for Hungary here. Commentator doesn't believe that there's any way back for Hungary. I hope there is, because... Um, that would be a great way to end the scenario. Here comes Bode, or Bode, however you say it. Went for the shot, I got tackled. Well, again, we have another scenario where I've done very little to pose any threat on Romania's goal. But here we go, and we scored straight away. And Hajnal, Hajnal, sorry, scores to make it... 2-1 now, okay, well the comeback is on. As soon as I said that we weren't doing well, we go ahead and score, so I need to keep downplaying how well I'm doing right now. Through ball here, go on. Oh, I went for the shot and is that gonna be, it is a penalty, yes. I thought it would have been because they literally like all slid into me then. Yes, we scored, it's 2-2, Hungary have pulled it back. And that is an amazing comeback. It's Jujak. Is that how do you say it? Jujak? I'm not sure. My pronunciation with foreign names is very, very bad. And I apologise when I butcher names like that. Come on. Varga. Into the middle. Get it. Dude. Oh, come on. Too close to the keeper. We have the chance, though, to score a third. Oh, that was so close. Great save by the Romanian goalkeeper. And that is it. We drew the game. I guess that's the main scenario. Well, I hope it's the main scenario. So, um, we've, yeah, we did it. We actually did all the requirements for the scenario. So, yeah, happy with that. We've got another decent one here. We've got Switzerland versus Iceland. So, Lars Lagerbach's Iceland find themselves in a tricky situation here. They are 4-2 down away against qualification rival Switzerland. Can you score two goals with Gudmundsson and recreate his hat-trick and give Iceland the draw? So this is another beer pro scenario, but this could be a good one. Half an hour remaining, Switzerland in control, but Iceland still have Johan Berg Gudmundsson in their team, and with him in your side and a corner coming, you never just know. No, you don't, Clive. He's been in top-class form recently, and he's the danger man. Oh, that was close from Gudmundsson. So we got to score two goals with this dude. And um, I'm guessing he's like a midfielder or something. Um, Iceland in 2014, how close did they come to qualifying then? Were they in the playoffs or something for the World Cup? Because obviously um, Iceland in 2016 were really good. So you have to think in 2014 they were like equally as good or maybe just getting their pieces together to become a decent nation. Come on. Crossed in, header, Ah, oh, come on, I pieced that together and everything and they still couldn't do it. It was a decent cross, but the header just was too weak. I don't think I'm going to do anything in this scenario, just because, oh, that was close from Iceland, very, very close. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to do anything because the game expects you to carry the whole team on your back as one player from Iceland. Uh-oh, Switzerland about to score, what a save from the Icelandic keeper. Yet again, I'm not in control of the team. They're just not defending. They just let him basically run through and almost tap it in. It almost feels like the game expects me to do everything. Like literally run around the pitch as this good Munson guy and actually just tackle Switzerland one by one until I get the ball back and score. Oh my God, like so delayed the controls. I press the X button to like cross it in and it took about 10 years for us to actually do it and an own goal we just scored it was an own goal by Switzerland uh, Barnetta scores it that was a bit of a random deflection let's have a look at that again crossed in came off of literally everybody and um, yeah okay so it's 4-3 look see I mean we couldn't do anything because yeah I didn't have the tools to actually do anything I mean it was 4-3 I mean I guess that was a decent result but 
I still don't complete this scenario. Another beer pro scenario, this time with Portugal, so it could be slightly different. Portugal are 2-1 down, but tonight Cristiano Ronaldo can make history with his hat-trick against Northern Ireland tonight. Ronaldo will break Eusebio's record uh, to go second in the all-time top goal scorers for Portugal. Can you recreate this historic moment? I hope so. Northern Ireland just over 20 minutes away from a famous victory here, but they know, we know, that Cristiano Ronaldo is still on the... Oh, that was so close by Ronaldo. So, obviously, we got to try and recreate a hat-trick with Portugal. Ronaldo! Oh, my goodness! Ronaldo, still got the ball here. Let's go for the strike. Oh, yes, we scored! Ronaldo! Nice one, outside the box. And Cristiano Ronaldo scores. And uh, we just need one more now. One more goal. So, Portugal are level at 2-2. All we have to do with Ronaldo is to shoot and it'll go in most of the time. We need one more goal to do it. Get the ball back. Get the ball back. Look at them. They're just standing off of them. Like, look, I'm, I'm having to do everything. Get off of me, man. I think that's going to be it, unfortunately. Into the middle. Go for the strike, dude. Yes! Yes! I mean, we won, but Ronaldo wasn't, like, the goal scorer, unfortunately. Um, but we set up Nani. I mean, I don't know how that works for the scenario. Wants to pick out Cristiano Ronaldo. Possibilities here. Scores! Oh, what a difference that's made! Such a crucial goal! And that's going to be it. We won against Northern Ireland 3-2. A very great comeback from Portugal, but we didn't get the second goal with Ronaldo. So, I mean, I'm going to leave it like that anyway, because we did win the game. So I'm not sure how that affects the scenario. We had to score three with our pro? Come on, man. That's like, I don't know. That's a bit of a tough one. I mean, I know it happened in real life, I guess, with Ronaldo scoring a, a hat-trick and that, but... I don't know, that, that one's a little bit too out of my reach, I think. Here's a good one, San Marino versus Poland. We're almost at the end of these uh, European scenarios, but this is one we have to do. So San Marino are trailing 1-0 at home to Poland, and after five long years without a competitive goal, things look bleak. However, the wait is almost over. Can you finally score a long overdue goal and then hold on for a truly memorable point? Midway through the first half and it seems to be going the way of every San Marino international already a goal down. And I can't remember when or if they've ever scored a, a competitive international goal. Well, there's always a first, Clive. You never know. But they've got to start by trying to get the ball forward and giving their forwards half a chance. Crossed in by San Marino and it's headed away. I don't know how San Marino actually scored in this game, to be honest. I mean, they have scored against Poland recently. Um, I can't remember if it was in a World Cup qualifying or a friendly match or something. I can't really remember, but they did score from a Polish like defensive error. Tackled by Poland. Should we go forward here? Yes, we can. It's Andy Selva. Can he score for San Marino? Off the post! Oh, so unlucky from Andy Selva. Through ball here. We're still on side, right? Poked, but just past the post. Oh, San Marino. No. No. Oh, my God. San Marino and Sobota scores to make it 2-0. We just couldn't defend it. They were just a little bit too strong for us at the back. Rinaldi. Oh, just wide. Oh, my God. San Marino, get your shooting boots on. Into the middle. Bit messed up there. Selva again, just why do? Seriously. This is San Marino's top goal scorer. And I say that when he only has like, what, nine or ten goals? But still. Poland have been really good at the back, not allowing us anything. And um, yeah, we finished that scenario conceding an extra goal. We were a San Marino, to be fair, but I mean, we should have scored the chances that we had. We're going to do one more scenario, and it's another be a pro scenario. This time with Portugal again, you get to be Ronaldo again. So it says here, Portugal are sitting on a one-goal lead from the first leg of the playoffs. 
But Sweden are firmly in the tie. Can you recreate Cristiano Ronaldo's night by scoring a hat-trick that sent Portugal to the 2014 FIFA World Cup? Sweden have a throw-in. Still waiting for the first goal of the evening. But remember, Portugal had that one-goal aggregate lead. Yep, still plenty of time for Sweden and Ibrahimovic, of course. But Portugal and Ronaldo are looking very sharp this evening. This is the last scenario that we are going to do on this part, and especially in Europe. The next part will be all the other regions in the world so I hope you guys stick around for that in my opinion this game even though it has good scenarios and everything and be a pro scenarios um, the mechanics of the game sometimes let it down Sweden are just not giving up the ball every time I keep asking the Portuguese players to try and tackle them they just don't Ronaldo lost the ball like the guy took it off of me I wanted to charge through and score but of course not the game's like, nah, you ain't doing that, taken away. Strike by Ronaldo, and that was our first shot of the game. I'm not even joking. It's been like 20 minutes, and I had to shoot from 30 yards out to try and get any kind of attack going. Look, an over-the-top ball that I didn't even ask for. I just went straight to the goalkeeper. This is probably how Ronaldo feels like when playing for Portugal. Or like Man United this season. Because oh my god, like the rest of the team is just not doing anything. They're just not tackling properly. They it's it's like I'm watching the game and I'm oh here we go. Yeah, Sweden score and that's over. Almanda scores to make it 1-0 to Sweden. What's Ronaldo doing celebrating with the Swedish team? This game is broken, man. Like, what's he doing clapping a 1-0 loss? But yeah, anyway, this has been your first part of Story of Qualifying. I hope you enjoyed it. Despite the lack of highlight moments and stuff like that, it's not like the other two games, is it, 2014? And we know that because, well, if you've seen my other gameplays, you would you just definitely know that. But um, yeah, I mean, if you did enjoy this video, then give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always, and I'll see you again for the next video.